because if you're a first time visitor, we do consider ourselves to be family friendly. So if the kids make noise, not a problem for us. If, if for any reason <coughs> you or anyone feels the need to leave the sanctuary, we've got a couple comfortable chairs in the hallway. You'll still be able to see and hear everything that, that takes place here. Uh, welcome also to our guests in Facebook. Thank you for joining us. Of course, you could have been anywhere. And you chose, chose to worship with us today. Thank you for that. We appreciate that. We, we feel honored. Uh, speaking of Facebook, if you're on Facebook, feel free to pull out your smartphone and check in. Let people know where you are and why. Um, and as God speaks to you today, feel free to post that in, your, in the screen. Uh, in your bulletins are communication cards uh, for guests. Please fill them out. Uh, I'm not going to fill your inbox with spam, but we might reach out and say hello and thank you for worshiping with us, that kind of thing. I do pray over the names as I go through these every week, paying particular attention on the backs of any special prayer requests. So uh, please fill them out at some point, and when the offering plates come around later, just drop it in that, and uh, I will get them. You'll see a spot in the bulletin that says sermon text. If uh, you experienced something this morning that you a question and wanted to, to send me a question, feel free to shoot me a text on that. We'll, uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can on the answer, possibly during worship, as long as there's not a whole lot of them. Uh, Facebook friends, if you have a question about something, you can also just put that as a comment on our, our video this morning, and we'll, we'll try to answer you as well. There are lots of announcements and the schedule in the bulletin. I direct your attention to those. And please you know, read through them and, uh, and, and go through them and as opportunity presents itself to you. Facebook friends, there are two times during the worship service when we might go silent. Once is if we're showing you a video uh, that we only have permission to show live, not on screen. The other is right now when we're sharing some private stuff with one another. During this time, we just ask you to be in prayer for us and for yourself. If you have a special prayer request, just put in that as a comment, and we will, we will pray for you as well. And we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. Thank you.
Unless you feel led to, to rise, and that's okay too. changing CDs, discs up there. I, I, I'm very thankful for the rain, because I know we do need the rain. I know you, you're yelling at me for that, but that's okay. Uh, it just reminds me uh, what it takes to, for, uh, to, for a flower to blossom. And I think each of us is a flower, is a, just people around us help nurture us and water and help us grow as Christians. Just very full of God. Are you hurting and 
please rise as you are able. God is good. And all the time. Trail markers are, are small signs along a path in the woods that indicate where you are and where the trail goes next. As we go along our discipleship path, we can use some signs to help us on our way. Otherwise, we might veer off the path or get stuck in a rut. Today, we begin the series on our pathway as we introduce the work of the Intentional Faith Development Team. This morning, we gather to be a church without walls by welcoming all and joining together in worship of the God who makes us one body with many members. Please pray with me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus the Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of uh, God's love, peace, and reconciliation.
God is good. And all the time. Do I have any kids that want to come forward for story time this morning? And a little music? Huh. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. The sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Good morning. The, rainy, the rain's got you down and mellow and stuff this morning, huh? Depressed, so to speak. Although your shoes are so sparkly. Isn't that cool? And you've got a tattoo. Cool. Well, starting young. That's all right. You'll catch up to me one of these days then with your tattoos. I have something here. Huh? Water? It wasn't water when I, when I first brought it over here this morning. Any guesses what was in here? Two hours ago? Not even two hours ago. Any guesses of what was in here for then? What might have I have had there two hours ago that turned into water during that time? Huh? Ice! Ice! I wanted to bring a... I brought an ice cube over. I was trying to save a piece of ice for, for you guys, for, for this message this morning. But ice is like a butterfly and cotton candy. Huh? Does that make sense? No. Does not make sense? It doesn't make sense at all. It, but it, this is a riddle for this morning. How is a butterfly and how are butterflies, cotton candy, and ice like each other? What do they have in common? You can't save them. If you try to save them, stuff happens. If you try to save a butterfly by putting it in a jar, what's going to happen to it? Bam. Bam. That's a good way of putting it. Bam. Bam. I mean, you can try feeding it and stuff too, but it's the fact that it's closed in like that, it's going to die. Yeah. Who likes cotton candy? You guys like cotton candy? Do you like cotton candy? I no? Candy. Yeah? Okay. Candy. You have jelly bean flavor cotton candy. Okay. Or cotton candy flavor jelly bean. You like cotton candy? Yeah. Can you save cotton candy? No. No. You have to eat cotton candy when it's fresh, right? Or right out of a bag. What happens if you just like set it down on a table and walk away and come back a while later? I'm not really hungry for this now. Maybe I'll have it this afternoon. And you put it on the table. What's going to happen? Poof. The opposite of poof, kind of. It goes, right? Because cotton candy is lots of air mixed in there and it's fluffy. But if you tried to save it, it collapses in on itself and it just becomes this ball of sugar. I mean, it still probably tastes pretty good, but it's not, it's not cotton candy anymore. Yeah, it's not cotton candy. And an ice cube, you can't no. save an ice cube because no. it melts. It it'll, melt. it'll still melt. It'll still melt. If you put it long enough in a freezer, it'll stay that way. well, it'll, it'll stay an ice cube, but it still changes form. It still shrinks up a little bit. It won't keep the same size. Because parts of it break off or whatever in the air. All kind of sciencey stuff. I can't answer that. But uh, ice cube, you can't save any of those things. Now Jesus, the one day Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he said something kind of odd about what happens when you try to save something. He talked about losing something when you try to save it. So I'm going to read what Jesus said. He called the crowd to him. He called a whole bunch of people over. There were all these people there. And he said to them, if anyone wants to follow me, if anyone wants to follow me, they must say no to the things that they want. You must be willing to die on a cross and you must follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will give up true life. But whoever gives up his life for me and for the good news will have true life forever. Those are some pretty heavy words, aren't they? Does it make any sense? No. 
No, not really, right? Not really. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Until we understand what Jesus was trying to say. What Jesus was saying is, if we want to really follow Jesus, then we can't want what we can't want what we want. We can't want what we want. And we have to be happy with having what God wants. You've probably, any, you guys ever see babies? What do babies do? We talked about this at Christmas time. What do babies do a lot? Cry. cry. Why? Because they want something. Yeah, they always want something. They always want something. <laughs> they always want something. Every single second. Yeah. Like, so how about you? Do you want something? No. No? Not right now. Not right now. They always want something, and they always want what they want. They always want what they want. Now, how about you? Do you, you probably, I mean, I still like to get stuff that I want. I, I still want things, and I still want things to happen the way I want them to happen. But as we get older, we have to learn that we can't always have what we want. Especially if we want to live with other people, we have to kind of give and take. And if we want to follow Jesus... We can't always expect to get what we want. We have to want what God wants. That's the best way to follow Jesus. Now, one of the things that God wants is for us to be connected to God. And what's a really great way to be connected to God? This is a little clue. Praying. So let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you. For loving us. Help us to want what you want. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, and we just pray that everything we think and everything we speak will be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, gather, gather, that's today. It's important to have a pathway. It's important to have... Um, have guidance. It's important to know where you're starting and, and where you're going. Um, if, if I ask for a show of hands, I bet we'd see a whole bunch. Travel with family and cars, especially with children. Yeah. Are we there yet? Right. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Those are important questions, especially you know, if we don't know where we're going. We don't know how long it's going to take to get there. So we ask those questions. Well, life is, is like that journey. It's like a journey in the car, uh, the, the life of discipleship, the life of, of being a follower of Jesus Christ. It's kind of like that. And we, we need to know how to move along that pathway. So uh, we had a few people that got together. We spent a whole lot of time on this, folks, uh, to create an an intentional pathway to help each other, to help ourselves, too. I'm going to speak for everybody that was on that group, on that team. We, we need it as much as anybody else does, if not more, uh, on how to move along on this path. Where am I at, and where am I supposed to be? Where am I supposed to be? Now, last week, the, the youth uh, led our worship service, which was outstanding, right? Amen on that. Filled with energy and... Audrey spoke, and it was fantastic. Great job. One of the scriptures that they used is, I'm going to reuse that scripture this week. See, Jesus says something to his disciples, and actually it's recorded in some way, shape, or form in all four Gospels. In all four Gospels, Jesus gives his disciples a commission. He tells them, this is what you need to be about. Uh, it takes place in different times in his ministry, and, and each, each of the gospel writers uses different words in how they present it. So most often, we're, we're familiar with the one from Matthew. 
And so why change things? We'll, we'll stick with Matthew's version of it. These are the last words of Jesus to his first disciples. The last words of Jesus to his first disciples. Now the eleven disciples were, went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them. And he said, I've received all authority in earth and in heaven. Therefore, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. There are three words in there that I really want us to focus on and, and emphasize on. Because Jesus says, therefore, go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Throughout Christianity, throughout the last 2,000 years, people have followed this great commission. And that's great because it is the mission of every follower of Jesus. It is the mission of every disciple, not just those 11 who were gathered there that day. They were the first ones to receive it. But they're not the only ones to receive it. And so it is the mission of every disciple of Jesus Christ to make disciples of Jesus Christ. And to continue to become disciples of Jesus Christ themselves. Throughout time and varying from church to church, denomination to denomination, Christian to Christian, how we've gone about it changes. Some concentrate very, very strongly on the go. And they head off to foreign lands to, to, to tell people about Jesus. Some people concentrate on the, the make part. Receiving people into membership. Baptizing is part of that. And then some concentrate on the teaching. But Jesus didn't give the disciples a choice. And Jesus doesn't give us a choice. It's not a one-part commission. It's not go. And it's not make. And it's not teach. It's go, make, and teach. So we might think that, that going someplace, even just to the mission field of Paxtonville and Middleburg and its surrounding environs, because that is indeed a mission field where people need to hear the message of Jesus Christ, where people need to hear the good news. Or in Mercy Me's song, not just good news, the best news ever. And we might think that by going and doing that and telling people the good news, that our job's done. Or we may think that by going and telling and, and inviting people to come to worship together with us to become part of the Paxtonville UMC, our job is done. But Jesus doesn't give us that choice. Jesus says you need to go, make, and teach. Because in the teaching is when we are becoming. In the teaching, we are becoming and we are making true disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. So every Christian on the planet, every disciple, everyone who calls himself a disciple of Jesus Christ has the same mission, to make disciples of Jesus Christ. 
how we do it can vary from location to location and church to church. As long as we keep all those three things in it. But how we make disciples in Paxtonville, Pennsylvania is different from how folks make disciples in uh, Dallas, Texas. Because it needs to be. Because it needs to be. So we looked at how we're going to do it. How, how are we going to go make and teach? And the first part of the pathway that, that the team came up with is, says that we, we gather. We gather. What a great sign folks put together just like this past week, I think, they, they put our banner up for us. Gather. We gather. Now, here's what we mean by gather, because that's only one word, and we need a full definition, a full sentence. We gather to be a church without walls. We gather to be a church without walls. And that means, it means a couple different things. It means a couple different things. First and foremost, it means welcoming everyone. Being open and welcoming to everyone, regardless of what they look like, Regardless of how they might think, regardless of how they might act, regardless of how much they are like us, and regardless of how much they are different from us. That's a church without walls. It, it also means to be, to be a church without walls also means to be able to work and willing to work with each other in spite of those differences. To work with unity, even if it means without uniformity. It also means being a church outside these doors. It means gathering together at times other than 1030 on Sunday morning to worship with one another in places other than this sanctuary. Paul wrote in Galatians, this is one of the, word, one of the words that spoke to us and uh, spoke to me in particular just last night as we speak about being a church without walls and being that welcoming. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Paul's writing about in the body of Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. Nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That is a church without walls. Welcoming Jew and Greek, male and female, slave and free. John Wesley, some of you are probably familiar with this quote from John Wesley, the world is my parish. Anybody, have you heard that expression before from John? I'm not seeing any hands. I saw a couple nods of the head. And it's a great expression, isn't it? The world is my parish. It sounds so lovely and beautiful and pastoral. When John said that, he didn't mean it that way. It wasn't a nice expression when he said it. He said it to a bishop because he was in trouble. <laughs> now imagine that, John Wesley got in trouble. Whew. Yeah, he did. He did because he was trying, he did because he was worshiping outside the building. He got in trouble because he was worshiping, he was preaching, he was gathering people together in places other than a church sanctuary on Sunday mornings. Because John knew that not everybody could be there on Sunday morning. He lived in a time and a place where people were working on Sunday in coal mines. And so John began what's called field preaching. He went to where people were and worshipped with them there. 
That is being a church without walls. Now, we're not going to be going to any coal mines. I don't think so. To preach and teach and worship. But it's part of our plan, part of our discipleship pathway to have those opportunities of worship at times and places other than Sunday morning and other than in this sanctuary so that we can go and make and teach. Gather is our first step in our discipleship pathway. And, and it's, it probably sounds like it doesn't have anything to do with anybody in here because it's all for new people. Well, sisters and brothers, and I'm going to speak from the team on this point. I think they'll agree with me. I hope they agree with me. If you see any tomatoes getting thrown, then you'll know they don't. We can be at the level of gather for most of our Christian lives. We can be at that level of discipleship, this level of, of coming and worshiping, and having that surface depth relationship with God for most of our Christian lives, for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And so I say that gather does affect everyone in this room because we have to start somewhere. We have to start somewhere. So we're going to be that church without walls, welcoming one and all. And we're going to start some levels of, of relationship with each other and with God in this gather before we can move on. <laughs> gather is not our end. It's our beginning. But when we get to our end, it's still not our end. Ooh, paradox. As we move forward, as we move forward over these next three weeks, as we move forward over the coming months and years, we will continue to gather to be that church without walls. And, and friends, it can't be just five or six people leading this, though, too. The, this whole idea of gathering as a church without walls, we need everybody on board. This needs to be a culture. So where, where do you see walls in our church? What, what individual or, or group do you see as probably being unwelcome should they show up at our door? How can we tear down those walls? Dear God, we thank you for all the blessings you've given to us right up to and including this day. And although this day may not be quite as beautiful and pretty as, as we might want it to be, it's, it's, it's a gift from you. And it is providing us with much needed water for plants and, and fruit and vegetables and flowers. Help us, God, to see the beauty in every day. As we claim to be disciples of your son, we pray for your strength and your grace to guide us along our path, to, to move us along our path. We are going to be intentional about that, God, and we need your help. So help us intentionally break down any walls, any barriers, barriers that might keep us from each other, and perhaps most importantly, God, keep others from you as we gather to be a church without walls. And God, we, we know that your presence has been here with us, and you've heard everything that we've shared. Not only have you you heard, but you've truly listened to our prayers, to our, our joys and our concerns. 
And although I might forget things, we trust that you do not. Each of our names is, is always in front of your face, virtually tattooed on your hand. So we shared the, the good news of, uh, of, of Ori and his, his decision and where he's going to college. And we, we, look, forward to, we look forward to all that life has in, in store for him, for all that you have in store for him. You have truly blessed and gifted him in some special ways. And I know that he is a blessing to his family, even more so than he is a blessing to us. We have shared the joy of church family who, who reach out to us when, yes, God, when we need it most, when, when we're suffering through illness and, and trying to recover from surgery, and uh, your, the church family reaches out and shares words and, and food and companionship and uh, when we are suffering through, through grief, through loss of, of loved ones, um, the church family is, is there for us then too. And we re, we've shared the joy of that knowledge, of those, those words of comfort and, and just the presence uh, of one another uh, as, we, as we struggle to get through. Signs of, of what your grace is like, Lord. For, signs of, of what your presence is like to us. And we've, we've shared the good news of, of, Paul's, uh, of Paul's testing. And we, we give you thanks for, that, for that, clear, that clear test. Good results. Good results on that. And God, we've also shared some concerns, though. We've, we've lift, we lift to you, Vita, praying for, for healing, uh, knowing that healing from that kind of an injury takes time. Um, so we just pray for her that, uh, that she'll be able to rejoin us soon, soon. We pray for Harold rejoicing that his surgery went well and knowing that he's got a long road to go. So we just pray that you'll be there with him throughout that. We've mentioned Jeff, who um, at first was doing well and now has had a recurrence of, of cancer and is, is having issues with the treatments. And we've mentioned Cindy and, and her diagnosis with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. So we pray for her. We lift her to you that she'll feel your presence in your hand holding her, holding her close to your chest. And we've, we've mentioned Donnie um, recovering from, that, from the motorcycle accident. We, we pray for him that he will, he will receive the healing he needs. And God, we do lift to you all who grieve and, and are in mourning uh, this day. In particular, we've mentioned uh, the family of Donna Harner. We just pray that they will feel your presence and see your light shining in their darkness. If there's a way that we can be that light, even if it's just like a matchstick in, in a deep, dark cavern, um, we pray that you'll, you'll give us the strength to step forward and, and do that and be that. We do pray for this world that's so broken and hurting that, and needs you so much. We pray for the, the leaders of the world that they will work together to find ways for peace and justice. We pray for our president and Congress and Senate that they'll do that for, for this land. We pray for those who keep us safe, uh, military at home and abroad and local police departments. We pray for firefighters that rush in when others rush out and emergency medical personnel who come to our aid when we need it most. We do pray that you'll send us the folks that nobody else wants and the ones that think they won't be wanted by us. Um, more important, just as importantly, God, that you'll, you'll encourage us to not just sit back and wait, but that you'll send us, that you'll tell us to go and, and to those people, to those people. Of course, God, everything we have is truly just a gift from you. We are stewards of, of everything. We are stewards of this planet. We are stewards of, of our personal resources, time, energy, and yes, money. And so this morning, God, we will be giving some of that back to you through the ministries of this church. And we pray for your presence in those ministries that lives will be transformed and healing will take place. And we lift all of these prayers to you in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, in whose words we now use. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, Again, he gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. As a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Brought your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Would my helpers come forward? This is not my table. It's not the United Methodist Church's table. It's God's table where Christ is the host. And all are welcome. All have place cards. That means you don't have to be a member of this church or any church. If you've heard, felt God speaking to you, if you've felt God's grace this week and you want more, please come.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, no questions. Our hymn of parting this morning is... Number 569, also on the screen. Uh, We have a story to tell to the nations. Please rise as you are able to do so. Let's join together in singing. Just real, real quick, we have a special announcement this morning uh, that Tommy, uh, Tommy would like to make. Uh, I think everybody knows, if you don't know, this is Tommy Rubelow. He is our lay leader here at Paxtonville, but he'd like to make a, an announcement. Okay. Oh. Piano. Piano Vox. Right. Hello. Okay, um, well, it's, <laughs> as much as I love you, I want to... <laughs> It's Rubillo. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Rubillo. Yes. Uh, um, as all of you know, uh, it's been a little over a year now uh, that I've started on a journey um, in pursuit of a calling. And, 
and uh, that I had been running from for a long time. Um, but um, this morning, uh, on the other side of Shade Mountain, uh, at a little church uh, at Dressler's Ridge, uh, it was announced that uh, their new pastor, Tommy Rubillo, uh, will be starting uh, July 1st. Over there, uh, I am. Lift it up. Lift it up. I'm very honored and uh, humbled uh, that God's going to entrust me. Uh, and this is just the very beginning of my journey. It'll be a course of study. Uh, there will be a whole lot, uh, a lot involved. Um, but I am so excited and uh, really looking forward to it. Um, my wife and daughter are not going to be leaving Paxtonville um, because of the love that you all have shared with us um, and how uh, involved the youth group uh, with Sarah. Um, I didn't think I was going to get emotional. Uh, but um, so every now and then they're going to come across the hill and attend service, mm -hmm. but for the most part, um, we do not want to sever ties at all um, here at Paxsonville. So thank you very much. One more time. One more time. <laughs> Soon to be Pastor Tommy. <laughs> and so folks, maybe you've got something you wanted to talk to God about. You've been struggling to put into words. You want to pray with someone. Uh, we've got some folks up front ready, willing, and able to do that just to help you. Or if you just maybe just want somebody to stand there with you while you pray, they're willing to do that too. We can pray alone, but when we pray together, not even the gates of hell can stand. And so the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forever. Go in peace. Love God and your neighbor in all you do. Amen.